Hello guys, I'm Super Ron. Welcome back to the channel and we are back on the Caddy 20 valve turbo show car build. You saw in the last episode, we got the 20 valve turbo engine back in the bay, all painted, all detailed, all cleaned and ready to go. We've got the intercooler on, the radiator in, all the fuel system finished. So we're well on the way of getting this to a point where it can start. So next, something you should always address on these engine conversions, you can go fast, you need to stop as well. This came out of the factory with 74 horsepower. We're gonna be tripling this, so the old brakes would not be up to the job. As you've seen on the build so far, we've got quite a Porsche theme. We've got Porsche seats going in it. We squeezed the Porsche wheels on. We've got Porsche door handles, Porsche steering wheel. So it was inevitable, we are going Porsche brakes. So we've got the Porsche Boxster, four pots, the adapters, and then the Corrado G60 brakes. They're the same stud pattern as VW, so they all went straight on. For the rears, we use Mark II Golf GTI disc setup. We've got all new bearings to go in them. Lee is just about to paint the calipers. He's got them in primer at the moment. They're gonna go bright red, just like the fronts. A normal problem with the Caddy is the handbrake cables. We've put new ones in this, but they're standard drum handbrake cables. Because the Mark I's never came with discs, the cables don't fit calipers but retrofication has come up with these spacers which go in where the handbrake normally does and that takes up the slack from the longer drum cables. So you can use your standard drum cables and just put these adapters in like that and that goes on to there like that. So then you can use these for rear discs. So as standard, the rear stub axle all it has to do is hold the bearing for the drum. We now need to bolt calipers to them. Luckily, the stub axles are still available for rear discs, so they look very much the same. They've just got a couple of ears out for the caliper to bolt to. The only thing is the stud pattern is different. So these bolt straight onto the beam like so, but our rear disc ones don't. You can get adapter plates that bolt onto this, then they have the stud pattern on to bolt the disc ones on. But unfortunately, we haven't got that extra room to space our wheel out anymore. So another way of doing it is just re-drilling to a disc stud pattern. So that's what we're gonna do. What we have found out now, you can buy plates for rear discs. You cut these ones off and then weld the rear disc plates on, which if we would have known that before, we could have got that done before we powder coated the beam. But we're all powder coated now, so we're gonna go with the re-drilling of the plates. So with drums, you have a tiny little cylinder at the top, and these are our factory setup. So it had tiny little solid discs, small little calipers. Now we're going to humongous four pot fronts, calipers on the rear as well. So we need a lot more fluid. And that's where this comes in. Also from rectification, this is a transporter, 25.4 millimeter master cylinder. And we've paired that with a brand new nine inch Mark II servo. So this will go on here, give better brake assistance, and it will pump more fluid everywhere where it needs to go. A few mods we're gonna have to do, this is only a two output master cylinder, not the four like before. But as we saw just before we put the engine in, we put a little T in, so that will go to the T to there. The other problem we've got is we haven't got any fittings to put the brake switches in. But luckily, as it happens, my brother was scrapping his Passat, so before it went, I took out the brake switch. So this is a four pinner, two for the brake lights and two for the ECU. So what I'm gonna do is mount this to the pedal and then we can connect the brake pedal up to the ECU as well. And that's just a little fail safe. So if the drive-by-wire malfunctions, you can tap on the brake and that'll disengage the throttle. So if you look at our new and old front discs, there is quite a difference. So this should handle that power nicely and look amazing behind the wheels. So let's start bolting some of these on. It's all just a bolt together job, new bolts to the hub. These bolt onto here. This bolt straight onto the hub. No modifications needed. So the Corrado G60 discs bolt straight on. Same center bore, same stud pattern as a Mark I, which is handy. Even the screws the same. So now let's get our adapters on. So these are the Epitech 562 adapters and they line up perfectly with the Mark I hubs. And like I said in the previous video, our powder coaters do a good job because they always mask off any faces that they know are gonna be mounted to. So these are ready to go straight on. 
torque them up in a minute. And the in-mounted calipers go on like that. Always remember, bleed nipples at the top. We have seen them on the bottom before. We'll have a hard time bleeding them up. And that is it, done. As easy as that, no mods needed. Everything just bolts together. And then this is where our four stud to five stud Porsche adapters go on. And that converts it to the Porsche stud pattern for our wheels. However, what we found when we first put these on, it was just ever so slightly touching. So behind these, we're gonna put a five mil spacer. So even though it's a spacer on a spacer, the eccentric part will still locate on the middle, so we won't get any wheel wobble. Ideally, maybe long term, we'll get some thicker ones of these made up, so it's all in one. And we are on. So we are spaced out quite a bit now, and they do just clear. We've checked our bolts on the back, and you might just be able to see in there, as the bolt comes around, we've still got plenty of thread. And most importantly, our centre bore is still on our centre bore. And then we can carefully slide our wheel on. And the caliper disappears behind the wheel. When it's stationary, you don't really see too much of it. But when it's moving, it looks a lot cooler. It's gonna have some awesome rolling shots with these. But this is with a five mil spacer and you can see there is not a lot of room. We did have a three mil spacer in there and it did just clear, but just in case we get a little bit of flex or anything, we didn't wanna take any chances. And on the inside, there is not a lot of room for wheel weights. Luckily, all our wheel weights are on the outside. But they're on and looking cool. And the other side all on, nice easy, bolt, bolt, bolt. Our rear stub axles haven't come yet, so let's have a look at this master cylinder. So here are the two servos. This is the original one from the Caddy, and you can see the obvious size difference. So this one with a much bigger diaphragm just gives better braking assistance. There's two types of nine inch servo. You need to make sure you get the one with the threaded end on it. So we can put our clevis. So we've got to take it off here, put it on there, and then the bolt pattern's the same and it bolts straight on. And there's the boot and clevis off. They just have a little flat on the shaft. So you can hold that with a 10. Then I found a 19 is the perfect size to go on the outside and just take it off. So I'll clean these up and get them on here. And we mark one ready. So that's ready to bolt on. You've got to make sure the hole's at the top because that's where the spring locks in. So now just get it in and put that through our linkage at the front. It should go straight in. Like so. It's going to be a bit fiddly now to get this linkage on. It's too easy. Everything has just bolted together. Clevis went in, it's a bit fiddly. There was no room for cameras and hands, but we're all in. Got our lock nuts on the back. Stage one complete. Now, we've got a pedal to go with our hydraulic clutch. Next up, master cylinder. So here's the two master cylinders side by side. This is the original caddy one, which is a four port. So it's got one, two, three, four. And then it's also got a brake switch on each side as well. Whereas all our new ones got is just two in, two out, and that is it. This is a 25.4 millimeter piston inside. And you can just see on this one, this is a 20. So a massive upgrade. And usually if we kept the same brakes, this would give a really long travel pedal. But because we've now got eight pistons on the front instead of two, we need a lot more fluid to move. The other thing I've noticed is the reservoir holes are different. See that one's far apart. These are close together. So we're gonna have to find out what reservoir goes on this. 
but this itself should be a straight swap. We've already got our T for the front, so that will look, loop underneath to the fronts, and then we'll run one all the way to the back and then tee it off at the beam. So this should be a straight bolt on. Oh, they are making this too easy. Nice. So we've got our T underneath here, so that will kind of just loop under, round, and up to there. Hopefully that won't get in the way of our boost pipe coming up through there. And it's well away from this. Sometimes if it's got a different shifter, this can hit the bottom of the brake lines there, but because now we've not got any coming out of the bottom, they're all at the top. Got a nice lot of clearance there as well. And the new stub axles have just turned up. As you can see, they've got the extra ears on compared to the drum, and that's where the carrier bolt's on. So that bolts through onto there. As you can see, they are a different stud pattern and bigger bolts. So Lee has made a start. He's doing the mammoth drilling job. We've got one at the top here, and then he's blued it all so we can mark it out properly. But we've orientated it so it is going to miss all the other holes. So that's going to work out nicely. While he's been doing that, I've been on my step looking at the brake switch. So I managed to get that all in and it works. I've just put a multimeter on there and it rings out every time we press the brake. So I'll just make another bolt hole for the bracket. We've got the existing bolt hole there. So I've just got to drill that one and unbolt it and we'll have a nice secure electronic brake pedal. And then we'll connect that to the ECU as well, just for our fail safe for our drive by wire pedal. And Lee has been busy too, a lot of drilling and a lot of tapping later, and we have our new stud pattern on the beam. As you can see, they clear all the existing holes, so we've all got good threads. So now our stub axle can bolt on, like so. And this side, we've got it all lined up. All the bolts are perfect. Just need some shorter bolts to go in there. That is good. And that's the last one, all on. So he has also just finished painting the calipers. They're all Porsche red to match the fronts. So when they're dry, they can go on. And that is probably his last ever bit of painting in the oven here. Because as you saw in last week's video, we are moving workshops. So next week, we need to be able to get this onto a recovery truck to transport it to the new workshop. So now I need to make sure this will be rolling. So we've got all our hubs on now, we've got all our brakes on. What we're gonna do is just build it up as much as possible, get everything bolted back on, the wings, the bumper, the bonnet, the door, everything that can bolt on will bolt on because that'll just make moving everything so much easier that we're not having to package everything and things get lost or damaged. At least if they're on the car, we know where they all are. And then I can whip the wings off when we get there the other end and finish off the wiring loom here. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I think we'll put the wings on. Pretty much anything we can bolt on, we will bolt on. The one thing that is gonna stop us at the moment is the air suspension, because we haven't finished the install. We've got the braided lines on the bags, but they just disappear into the car, into nothing. So all we're gonna do, we're just gonna connect all four together, put a shroud of valve on, and then at least we can just pump it up to be able to move it. So what I've done underneath, we've got this airbag, connects to that airbag, and then there's a T, and that runs down along, along here, cable tied it on there. And then that disappears through that little gap we've got by the shifter, and that connects to the front two inside the car. So that'll do for our transport. Let's get the rest of the bits on. The other thing I've just tried on is the original Caddy brake lines, and they do in fact screw straight in the same thread as the Porsche calipers. The only thing is when they're on the Caddy, they're pointing up so because it's got to go out and around, it does make it a little bit tight. When we go on full lock. That is a little bit tighter here than we'd like. But with this raised up, it might be all right. So this might be an option just to use the straight caddy brake lines, which will be really handy if that does work out. And then following the air suspension lines, we come out of that flexi across to this T, across to another T, and that one goes round and pokes through, connects to the rears. And then here, we've just got a little tyre valve where we can put our compressor on 
and blow all the bags up together. We just want them at full ride height, so we can just pump it up and then it'll be a roller. Oh, and got the drive-by-wire throttle back in and got the bracket all painted for our brake switch. So now we've got all three pedals. So now we can put our tyre inflator on and test it and pump it up. And that's got us up at 50 PSI. So now all the bags should be, yes, fully inflated. Yep. And can't hear any hissing. So they should stay up for the journey. Yep, air ride on a budget. Yep, they are all rock solid. So now when we put it down, it's gonna be at full ride height. So we can get it off the ramp on its own wheels. But let's get it dressed up a bit first. And there is the rear calipers all on and looking pretty. Everything's all connected up. We've got the handbrake cable connected up and now you can see these adapters that makes all this possible. A problem when you fit in rear discs on a car that never came with them is always the handbrake. So with Mark 1 Golfs, we often use Scirocco or Mark 2 Golf handbrake cables, but they're always a bit long and never really fit right. But these are actually the original Caddy drum handbrake cables. And then this takes up the slack and locates into the caliper. What a genius idea. And we've just adjusted them up and the handbrake works perfectly. So that is certainly a game changer for these rear disc conversions. And here are our five mil hub centric spacers at the front. So the hub bore is exactly the same as factory. They're not like the universal ones, which then allows our Porsche adapters to go on and they're still locked on the hub. So if you have misaligned center bores and it's only centered on the bolts, you often get your wheel doing this. But as we're hub centric, this is still gonna drive nice. So we'll get these bolts in and check them out very cool indeed so let's get this looking like a car again and it's dressed what a difference a few panels can make just waiting for some clips for the grill to go on that is looking very cool it's at the time where we can get it on the floor Check that out. Pump it back up. And there it is sitting on the floor, rolled out by itself, aired out, and it's sitting down nice and low. Looks perfect. You can see the Porsche just peeping out through the wheels. And they're sunk nicely up in the arch. And the bay is looking spectacular. It's quite funny seeing the contrast now of the new and the old paint. We've got our fresh bay and then our old weathered outside. Kind of cool leaving it like this, especially once the bonnet's on as well, you'll pull up looking this way. But when you open the bonnet, you are greeted with that. So apart from a few plumbing lines, we are all done in here. This is what it's going to look like. We've got the header tank to go on, the brake lines in that corner. But overall, this is how the engine bay is going to end up. And the rear discs are all tucked up in there as well through the wheel. Now we've got the wheels in the arch, we can adjust the link arms to get it perfectly in the centre and adjust it up and down as well to get that perfect height. But we are all clear here. All our mods and tyre changes have worked perfectly. 
We can get this back end sitting just a little bit lower as well. It's great seeing this down on the floor again. It has been quite a while. And that's the door back on as well. So we are a complete car again. And if we have a look underneath, you can see we are almost on the floor. Nothing is actually touching. We are millimeter perfect. If we look at the splitter here, you can see we are just clear. So that is perfect. You don't want it resting on anything. And if we squeeze and look underneath, you can see everything is almost touching, but not quite. And if we look around this side, you can see the shallow sump is doing its job perfectly. That is clear of the floor with that extra bit on the back it's where it makes all the difference. So this is a great success. And we have made it. We have met the deadline. The recovery truck is coming tomorrow to pick it up and we have managed to get everything we can bolted on. We've got the car rolling and I'm glad today we have got all four brakes in all four corners. The Porsche brakes look spectacular. Squeeze behind the Porsche wheels. All we've got to finish off on the braking system is just to finish off the brake lines at the front, get the brake line round to the back, and then we can wrap that up as well. We've still got a few more plumbing jobs to do in the engine bay, but that's pretty much finished. Everything is now bolted on in its final fit. And because we had mocked it all up before, it just all went straight in. So I think I'm gonna wrap this episode up here. We will continue in the new workshop with the Caddy build, and hopefully I can carry on the series just as I have in this workshop. And of course, don't forget the Caddy has got its own merchandise line as well. You can get Caddy Crew t-shirts, jumpers, cups, stickers, all from the links below in the description, and you can show off you are part of the Caddy Crew as well. And if this is your first time stumbling across the Caddy build, we've got a full playlist of the entire series put together for you guys to watch, because this came in as a completely standard broken diesel Caddy, and we have turned it into the show car you see here. So you can catch up with all those episodes up until where we are now. As you can see, we've already started the moving process. So I'm not sure how much work I'm gonna get on the Caddy this week, but hopefully I can film some of our moving process as well. So you guys will see the new workshop when we do. So make sure you give this video a like, and until next time, make sure you have fun.